Hi guys, in this video I'm just going to be looking into the Firetech Mini 3D Pro Gimbal which I'm running on my Sky Hunter. I'm just going to have a quick look at the setup, how I attach this to the aircraft. I'm going to look into the wiring. Um, I'm also going to give you a demonstration of the three different modes that you can use on this gimbal. So you have a good idea as to how it performs. Okay, so first of all, uh, this gimbal comes with obviously the main unit here. Uh, it also comes with this plate at the bottom here. So first thing you have to do is attach this plate to the aircraft somehow. Um, <clears throat> I've used a really simple technique here. I've actually just used lollipop sticks or popsicle sticks if you're from America. Um, so what I've done is I've actually got two coming along this way and on the back I've got two going the other way and the screws come through the plate and onto these which grip nicely onto the bottom of this here. So that's pretty simple. Once you've got the plate there in place it's just a case of using the rubber balls that are supplied with the kit to then attach the plate to the gimbal itself. Mounting the camera to the gimbal is pretty simple. Uh, first of all it does say in the instructions this is suitable for a GoPro 3, 3 Plus, 4 or similar size camera. So I don't know the exact models that work with it but I do know that the GoPros work and this is a 3 Plus Black that I'm using here. So it's pretty simple, um, you actually just get these two screws here which are actually just hand screws and basically it just, once you put those on with this plate here it just holds the GoPro in place against this U-shaped plate on the back there. You also get this cable here with the kit which attaches to the gimbal and then plugs into the side of the GoPro. Uh, this is used for the live feed and it is also used for powering 5 volts to your GoPro or other camera so that you actually don't need to worry about it running out of battery or having to charge it before you go to the field which is actually quite a nice feature uh, I found. So looking at the wires on this thing it actually came originally with one, two, three, four connectors to, uh, in fact there was five, five connectors sorry um, with all these different cables and what I've done is just to simplify uh, the way I attach this or plug this in in the field I've cut the connectors off and attached six of them the cables to this MPX connector and left one standard connector so rather than plugging five in the field I've now just got those two so going through each of these uh, the first one is the red and black uh, as the colour suggests that is for your power to the gimbal yeah the gimbal takes between 7 and 17 volts of power I actually just tapped into my 12 volt video and just yeah that's how I, I powered the gimbal so this is running off 12 volts the next one here is you've got white and blue the white and blue are actually your pan and tilt so what you need to do is you need to send each of these cables to a signal pin on your receiver so then you can use those to program your transmitter to adjust the pan and, pan and tilt on this while you're flying. Um, you have a yellow and black. This is your live video feed. So if you want to be able to see the live feed from your gimbal camera as you fly, you need to make sure that you attach this. And I'll show you how you've done that later uh, through a video switcher. And then the last cable is this brown and black. Um, this is to control the mode of the gimbal. So the gimbal has three modes and I will do a demonstration of each of those later. But you need to attach this to, again it needs to go to your receiver because you can then configure a three-way switch or dial however you want to do it um, to then flick between the different modes this gimbal offers. Okay, so here's a Sky Hunter. Uh, you can see coming from the plane, here is the other end of my MPX connector and servo cable, which match up with these two connectors on my gimbal here. Um, also, with the live feed output, which is great for when you want to kind of frame your shots. Uh, also, if you want to adjust the the pan and the tilt of the camera, see so exactly where your GoPro is aiming. Uh, that's what you want to use that for. But you don't really want to use that for flying because obviously when you 
when the aircraft banks to the side, this camera will stabilize and you'll always just see a completely stable image. So you won't exactly, you won't know how your plane is behaving um, through that view. So for that reason, what you'll need to do is you'll need to attach a fixed camera somewhere. And in my case, what I've done is I've put my FPV camera into the nose of the plane there. Um, I think it's a good location because A, it doesn't get in the way of the GoPro. So, you know, some people I've seen put them on the front here. The GoPro will see it and it will kind of ruin the shot. Uh, and obviously you could put it up behind the GoPro, but then you've just got all this in the way. So I think in the nose is the best place for it. Now, because you've got two cameras, you'll need one of these little guys here, a little video switcher. This is just a cheap Hobby King three-way switcher, which means it allows for you to attach <coughs> up to three uh, cameras. And during flight, you can then use a switch on your transmitter to uh, change between the views. So what you need to do is you connect your input. So first of all, my FPV camera, I've connected into one of the inputs. Second of all, I've connected the this camera here with the uh, yellow and black that's going into there as a second input and then my output goes on from here up to the autopilot and then on to the video transmitter <clears throat> you also need to connect your receiver using a servo cable um, obviously because you'll need a channel to program a switch in order to switch between the different views during flight okay so the gimbal is now connected and I'll just mention again this brown and black cable is for the mode of the gimbal. There are three modes. So what I've done is I've attached this cable to a channel on my receiver and I've programmed this switch here, if that's in view. This switch here uh, on the top of my Tyrannus. It's a three position switch, so each position being a mode of the gimbal. Okay, I'm gonna power it on now and give you a demonstration of those three modes. Apologies for the sound of the servos, they are a bit jittery. Okay, so this gimbal has come to life now. <clears throat> so on the first mode, um, you'll notice that when I tilt the canopy, you'll see that actually it stabilizes the tilt. It also stabilizes the roll, and it also follows the nose of the aircraft as you're turning left and right. You can't control the pan in this mode, but you can control the tilt, which I have set to one of my dials here so I can adjust the tilt up and down Now, wherever I leave the tilt it will stay at that tilt angle and remain stabilized <clears throat> the second mode in this mode here you will notice the, di the main difference here is that as the plane tilts up and down the camera actually follows the tilt rather than stabilizing it it, again, it still stabilizes the roll and it still follows the nose of the aircraft. You cannot control the pan and you cannot control the tilt. So there's nothing you can control in this mode. <clears throat> okay, the third and final mode here is the heading lock. Now in this one here, you can control both pan and tilt, but first I'll show you how it behaves as it moves. So first of all, the tilt is still stabilized, the roll is still stabilized, but as you turn, it actually holds the compass heading that it was facing when you activated this mode. Now what you can do is you can adjust the pan. So if I turn the dial to the side, the more I turn it, the quicker the camera turns. That's now the dial is fully turned to the left, so that's as quick as it will pan. Because it is mounted to a slip ring, you can rotate as many times as you want to. Now if I am to stop the camera from panning, it will then remain locked into this location that you pointed in. So if I turn, you'll notice still locked to that compass heading. When I flick it back to one of the other modes, it will automatically point to the nose of the plane again. Okay, one last thing I'll say about the gimbal is it does have a USB connector on the back there so you can hook this up to your computer. Uh, I think that's just for software updates really. 
I haven't done any updates to this since it came out of the box. It's never been connected to a computer. It was simply plug and play and this is how it performs. Um, so I'll leave it there and I will now just cut to some footage of this thing in action.